In this lecture today, we will discuss about model sensitivity and uncertainty analysis. If you recall that in one of the previous lectures, we also discussed about the you know capacity of modeling and how modeling exercise can help us to somehow estimate, evaluate some of the impact of activities even without going into the field. Because there could be sometimes some situations when you or your team physically may not be able to go to the field. And that point of time, this kind of modeling exercise will allow you to actually mimic the reality at the field level and also carry out the analysis. Modeling exercise also, if you recall, I mentioned that it can predict also on the basis of the past and present information. A model can be as robust as is the quality of the data that you provide as input into a modeling system. So, we discussed quite a detail. So, if you can uh, you know go back and refer to the modeling lecture. Today, what we are going to discuss is that how we can actually analyze the sensitivity of a model. Means, if you change small parameter here and there, whether the model gets affected or not. And also, we will try to find out that how uncertainty in modeling exercise can be analyzed and also understood. Now, modeling sensitivity analysis basically we do to determine the rate of change in the output of a model with respect to the changes in model input. Suppose that this is a model kind of a system functions takes place suppose inside the box. Now, here you have inputs and outputs here all right. Now, the rate of change here in input. Input suppose if we consider if you recall that we discussed in great detail about crop models right. So, if suppose a crop model is there then what kind of parameter we need temperature then uh, different kind of uh, wind also humidity then soil property like nitrogen soil nitrogen carbon ok then you need pH etcetera etcetera etcetera. So, these are basically your input right and in the modeling exercise you come out with the output where it is for a crop model yield predicting yield. Now, any change in any of these input parameter how it could actually impact the output means the yield. If you change suppose temperature by 1 degree centigrade whether yield goes up or goes down these are all actually sensitivity analysis. Now, sensitivity analysis also ranks the inputs or the parameters which depend upon their contribution to the model output. So, the model output here in a crop model is yield. So, here what sensitivity analysis also allow us to do to rank the input parameter depending upon their role in controlling or regulating the yield. Say for temperature, wind, humidity, nitrogen, carbon, etcetera, etcetera, you find that humidity is one which can actually affect the yield parameter quite significantly. So, humidity will go on top, then may be pH, then may be temperature, then may be your carbon nitrogen like that. So, you can rank them. Why you do this? It helps actually determining the most influential inputs on a model. So, you can identify that which one of these inputs actually are affecting your output that is yield for a crop model. Now, sensitivity coefficient is one aspect. Sensitivity coefficient is the measurement of the sensitivity of a model all right. Now, sensitivity coefficient is expressed as S A equal to delta F by delta X. Now, numerically 
sensitivity coefficient is a function of x plus delta x minus f x minus delta x by 2 delta x. Now, I will explain what are these. Delta x vary from some percentage like say 5 percent, 10 percent, 20 percent etcetera from its original value of the inputs. Here we are talking about the inputs. So, the variation in any of the inputs in the value by 5 percent, 10 percent, 20 percent that is depicted by delta x. Numerically, in case of or not easily differentiable function if you find, then what happen is that you try to do it completely in a mathematical manner. In case the differentiable function is not easily available or easily doable. So, then you can do it numerically. If a model suppose has a large set of inputs 15, 20, 30 and parameters, then you need more time for modeling. Even sometime we find that with 5, 4 or 5 parameters when we try to run model and with iterations, it takes you know lot of time, sometime even hours together. So, to reduce this kind of consumption of time, sensitivity analysis also helps. So, sensitivity allows you to rank your parameter. So, accordingly you can take suppose you are finding that your modeling exercise is taking huge amount of time, you can actually then identify the top 3, top 4 parameter and then you go ahead because they may be capturing almost 70 to 80 percent of the yield prediction or sensitivity. So, in that case the bottom 3 or 4 you can neglect because see you have to see that it cannot take such a long time because time is also an important parameter, important also resource for you. So, that is need to be seen all right. Now, with an example I will try to explain the sensitivity analysis. Suppose a simple example of a model, simplest that you can think of, y is equal to 1.6 x to the power 1.1, where x i is equal to n is 1 to 1.36 into x, x value range from 2 to 0 0.5 and x 3 you have 0 0.29. So, these are 3 different parameter x 1, x 2, x 3 and you have values like 1.36.15.29. Now, let us see that how we can analyze the sensitivity of the simplest one model. So, to compute the sensitivity of the model inputs, if you find the original values of the input, here it is x 1, x 2 and x 3 are varying in the range of 20, 15, 10, 5 percent plus 5, 10, 15 and plus 20 percent. That means, you can say plus minus 5 to 20 percent. So, that is the range variation that you have. So, the original value of x 1 suppose is 10, x 2 14 and x 3 30. How can we calculate the sensitivity of this very, very simple model? Now, if you change the value of x 1, change the value of x 1, keeping x 2 and x 3 constant, you will find a change in y, right. So, because your y is a function of x 1, x 2 and x 3, if you see the this model, all right. So, here first case we are changing the value of x 1 only, keeping x 2 and x 3 constant, which is x 2 40, x 3 30, all right. See here, so 40 and 30, x 2, x 3 is constant. What we are going to do? We are going to play with x 1. So, we would see, like to see that how x 1, if we change, affects the output which is yield, right. So, that will allow me to understand that if I keep my other two parameter x 2, x 3 fix and change x 1, if I get different kind of y data like here you see 
we are changing x 1 original value is 10, we are changing 8, 8.5, 9, 9.5, 10.5, 11, 11.5, 11 12, different value right. And these all should range as I said between plus minus 5 to 20, within that range we are changing the value of x 1, keeping x 2 and x 3 same. You see we are going to get different kind of values right. Now, we calculate the delta y that means, the differences, differences uh, between the original value, this is the original value and then this calculated value as per the change in the value of x 1. If I make 8.5, then how much, if I make 9, then how much. So, this is the difference, this is the difference means the original value 170 the other values is go up to 159 which is less than 170 this much less minus 26 minus 19 minus 19 minus 6 and then it goes at the plus range higher than original value 6 13 20 28 okay so you got a set of values here by changing only one parameter that is x all right now, here if you see that 20 percent reduction of 10, that is 20 percent of 10 and 80 percent of the 10, that is 0 0.8 into 10, that means 8. So, here you got 8, all right. So, how you calculate that? Then you get the value 126 and your original 170. So, the differences divided by the original value multiplied by 100 you get the percentage term, percentage term of differences between the original and the estimated one after changing the value of parameter x 1 all right. Now, change the value of x 2 keeping x 1 and x 3 constant and then let us see that how much differences we are going to get in y. You remember here we are getting the differences you see that 26, 20, 19. So, between 6 percent uh, plus minus to almost 28 percent right. Now, here x 1 we are keeping original value fix, we are changing x 2, x 1 and x 3 are fixed. Now, you see that whether it is affecting the yield more than x 1 changes in x 1 or not. Now, we have changed here the value from original and we are getting corresponding value of y. Now, you see the differences. So, it is range more or less plus minus 0 0.7 to 3, 3.2 maybe. So, this is the range whereas, here is the earlier one you saw the range much higher right. Same way here 20 percent reduction we are doing 20 percent reductions of the value of 40 which is 32 all right. So, 32 we got here. Now, the value is 165 y value, how much is the difference divided by the original and then you get minus 3.29 percentage of differences all right. Now, see last one x 3 we will change x 1 and x 2 will keep constant. Here you see that how much percentage of yield is actually changed because of change in x 3. Till now our changes in y yield is in case of x 1 higher than x 2 right sensitivity. So, same this is same now here we are changing again here 20 percent reductions. So, you get the value 24 you fix it at 24 here then you get the value here and the original value here subtract it multiplied by 100 you get the value 6.26. So, you see the range here more or less the range is 1.4 plus minus 2 6.2 that is the range. Okay. So, the lowest we find that in case of x 2 when we change the value of x 2. Now, let us plot it all the value that you have got model sensitivity analysis now will be much more clearer to it is. See we plotted now y x 1 y x 2 y x 3 means when we have changed the value of x 1 then the yield x 2 then the yield in red x 3 then the red in green 
Now where you are finding you know larger differences certainly here in the case of x1 right. So, it is clear that highest percentage change in y is occurring due to percentage change in x1. So, therefore, x1 is the most sensitive among the three inputs. I hope that I could clear your understanding. This is the simplest example that I can think of to help you to understand the sensitivity. I shall repeat it again for the benefit of all other participants who are not from mathematical background. So, imagine that it is just a simple function y is a function y is yield is a function of x 1, x 2 and x 3, 3 parameter. These 3 parameters all of them affect your yield that is output that is the simplest model. Now, we want to analyze the sensitivity of this model means which one of these 3 parameters affect my output or yield maximum. So, what, what I have to do? In first case, I have to keep 2 constant and 1 I will change. Second time, I will fix these 2 and change suppose x 3. Third time, I will fix x 1 and x 3 I will change x 2 and then I will calculate the y values and then also the differences as I explained here in a very simple way. And then you find out the delta y, the differences and range of that. Like here you found that when you change x, you find the differences almost plus minus 6 to 28 percent, 26 percent, 27 percent, that range of uh, you know changes if you change x 1. If you change x 2, then you find roughly around 0 0.7 to 3 percent changes, which is much less. That means, x 1 is affecting more than x 2. Then we change x 3. Here also we find that the changes in yield is 1.4 to 6.2, that is the range, which is much less than x 1. So, that means, in my out of 3 parameter x 1, x 2, x 3, it is the x 1, which is impacting my yield the most. So, that means, x 1 is the most sensitive parameter in my exercise. I hope that this is clear to all of you about model sensitivity. Now, this simple the way I have explained the same thing now can be much more complicated when you bring in several uh, input parameter. Okay? But the basic philosophy, basic understanding of sensitivity analysis is exactly the this which I have not just now explained and I hope that it is uh, you know almost clear to your understanding. Now, sensitivity is one thing. The next thing comes model uncertainty analysis. If you remember the modeling lecture that I have discussed in the previous one of the previous lectures, we discussed about the uncertainty right. Model can mimic the real situation, but not exactly the same way, it can never be. We can try our best to go as close as to the original in the field or in the nature. So, there will be certain amount of uncertainty you know in modeling exercise. Now, let us see that how that uncertainty we can also analyze and understand about a model. Uncertainty is the deficit of sureness in any kind of phenomenon within the model that you are using. Say suppose you are using a model to predict rainfall. Now, your that model is based on past data. Now, if the past data quality is not very good, which suppose you have gathered from various weather monitoring stations or maybe third party data source, if they are not very good then your prediction of rainfall will have certain any model exercise will have certain uncertainty. So, uncertainty of model is that the deficit of sureness in any phenomena. Next, a set of possible you know states or outcomes where the probabilities are assigned to each possible state or outcome. 
I repeat a set of possible outcome where probabilities. So, suppose rainfall, rainfall your modeling exercise can give with some probability that okay, there is you know 60 percent probability that there will be rain tomorrow. You cannot say with 100 percent certainty tomorrow it is going to rain. So, each of the outcome suppose rainfall is one outcome, wind, humidity, etcetera, temperature, different outcome. So, you can associate certain probabilities with those you know parameter of phenomena. In a model uncertainty generally occurs in output due to various regions while you actually run your model. Now, what are those regions? Already some of them we have discussed. Still input variables, uncertainty in your input variables, data, past data okay, in the model that you are actually putting. So, previous example I saw that y is a function of x 1, x 2 and x 3. So, these are your data, input data. So, the uncertainty in these input data is also one region of the uncertainty in the outcome. Uncertainty in model parameters that is also another region it could be. Uncertainty in model initial condition and boundary condition. Again I would request you to refer to the modeling lecture that we discussed previously. So, if your initial and boundary conditions also has certain uncertainty, you are bound to get certain amount of uncertainty in your outcome. Uncertainty in model assumptions, the algorithms that you choose, the objectives that you actually work for and the stopping criteria means at what point of time you will actually stop your run, model run. Then comes spatio temporal variation of parameter. This also you know most of the time you will get there is certain amount of uncertainty and it is very difficult to get rid of these uncertainties completely. We have to live with that. Now, model sensitivity analysis another example I will try to give where you can understand little bit more. Say again we take a simple model for suppose drop inlet spillway, drop inlet spillway normally you know it is used for water management activity which is constructed for soil and water conservation purposes. The output of the this particular phenomena which is related to the input variable such as the length of the pipe, okay? how much water actually going per unit time. So, the length of the pipe is one, velocity v will be another one, entrance head loss coefficient k e is one, the point this is the pipe, the entrance where actually this pipe you connect with the water source, entrance head loss coefficient and then acceleration due to gravity which is g. So, here you can calculate h f which is the head force which is a function of k e l v square by 2 g, v is the velocity. Now, while determining the sensitivity percentage of the variables like length of pipe, velocity, entrance head, how you can do that? Suppose the pipe length is 20 meter your entrance head coefficient is 0.4, gravity acceleration is 10 meter per second square and then which is a suppose constant that you are taking because that will not change right and then velocity 5 meter per second and when the value changes 10 percent from its original value. Now, here you see length 20, head 0.4, velocity 5. Now, we are changing slowly x plus delta x that means, which is, is 2, 20, 22, 0 0.4, 0 0.04, 5.5 means 0 0.5. So, these are the variations that you are making. Similar way it can be having again x minus delta x another value, here you added plus 2, here minus 2, here plus 0 0.4 and here minus 0 4, here plus 0 0.5, here minus 
0.5. Now, H f into x plus delta x and then you get H f x minus delta x. So, two different value you will get. So, here when you are using x plus delta x one set of value and where here you are using x minus delta x another set of value. Now, you come to your significant coefficient analysis which we discussed earlier S A. Remember? Now, this we are trying to calculate numerically to find out the sensitivity coefficient is a H f into this minus this divided by this by this all will come from these values. So, you get basically 0 0.5, 25 and 4 three different value for three different parameters. Now, then you calculate the sensitivity percentage. Sensitivity percentage is sensitivity coefficient divided by summation of sensitivity coefficients into 100. Summation of all these three coefficients that is your S A. So, each each of the S A of the parameter divided by summation of S A into 100 will give you the percentage, percentage sensitivity. So, numerically you can actually also analyze the sensitivity of your model. All right. So, again I just you know for your benefit once again have a look at that that how we are actually doing the sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity coefficient and sensitivity coefficient can be calculated numerically. So, here you can actually calculate it numerically in this process which we have followed in at the last example and then here I showed you through a very simple example y output as a function of you know three parameters and then how three parameters changing one at a time two keeping constant and then you find that which one is the more sensitive one. And then we have another example where we try to show you know that how you can calculate numerically also the significance coefficient and then finally, the significant percentage. So, this particular lecture is, is dedicated to your sensitivity analysis and also to understand the uncertainty uh, you know in the model analysis and why this uncertainty take place. Okay. So, once again that any model for any purpose whether it is for water or soil or crop the most important part is that you understand the sensitivity of your modeling exercise. Once you understand that am among your input parameters which are the most you know sensitive parameters which actually you know regulating your outcome or output of modeling exercise very very strongly you can rank them. If you see that your modeling exercise is taking too much of time you can make a call you can actually choose the first few parameters because they are the parameters which are strongly affecting your outcome. Most of the cases the top few ones will actually capture 60 to 70 percent or sometime even more than that depending upon the you know case the outcome of your modeling exercise. So, that is that is the one decision that the as a user you or me we have to take it. Mm -hmm.